Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Machine Dana and in this video I'm going to be giving you some tips, tricks and some hints. So I recently completed a 24 hour stream. It's one that I've been planning for a couple of weeks. Uh, I've been meaning to do one. I've been streaming in total for just under four months and I've been really wanting to do a 24 hour stream because I just wanted to test myself to see how my viewers would react to it. Uh, and also just to see if it mixes up the content a little bit. I also just kind of was curious to see how a 24 hour stream would run. A 24 hour stream is a really good way to give something slightly different and new to your viewers. It's a good way of being able to vary up the content that you do, uh, including the types of games that you might normally play, but also to expose yourself to different games and also to expose yourself to different times of the day. Uh, where you may be susceptible to pick up new viewers, new new followers, or maybe even uh, keep viewers that you would normally have for longer. The thing to bear in mind about uh, a 24-hour stream is it's not an easy feat. It's not, not really something you can just decide on the fly that you can do, uh, or at least if you want it to be a successful one, you can't really do that. Uh, there's a few things that you can do to maximize the chance of its success. When I run my 24-hour stream, I hit the highest new maximum viewership uh, that I've ever had. I also had the highest ever average viewership. And bearing in mind that was for a 24-hour period, that made that particular thing, uh, you know, really, really uh, quite, a, quite a big thing, really, because you're actually trying to keep at an average viewership for a longer period of time, which makes it obviously a little bit more uh, difficult to do. Uh, so I feel like giving some advice about this would be pretty good content for people and hopefully some people find it useful. If you do find it useful, please hit the thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it and it will also help other people who are planning a 24-hour stream to have some tips and advice about that. And also if you want to see more content like this or any other tutorials, feel free to browse my videos. I do a lot of Streamlabs and streaming-based tutorials and advice and things like that uh, feel free to hit the subscribe button finally if you want to check me out on twitch feel free to visit twitch.tv forward slash machine dana without further ado we'll get into the video where i give the advice on how to set up and manage and properly make this most of a 24-hour stream okay so i'm broadly going to split this video up into i think four sections so first of all i'm going to talk a little bit about planning first of all starting times and ending times so 24 hour period is going to start and finish essentially at the same time uh, it's a long amount of time it's not for everyone doing a 24 hour stream isn't something that, that i would really recommend doing uh, without some proper planning uh, and honestly if sometimes you struggle to finish a two three or four hour stream uh, I would not recommend trying a 24 hour stream without a lot of help or a lot of planning. If it's pretty routine for you to do 10, 12 hour streams, you're probably going to be able to do these streams pretty pretty easily, a 24 hour stream. So you might want to test yourself first with a, a 10 hour or a 12 hour stream. With me, I had naturally done a couple of streams that were sort of seven, eight, nine, uh, one stream that was 11 hours. So I know I was probably in good shape to be able to do a 24 hour stream, uh, particularly with some extra planning that I did. So in terms of starting and finishing, you want to make sure that your start time and your finish time is properly planned. Don't just go into this and say, mm, I might start the stream at a certain time. You want, to, you want to have that time in your mind at least a good few days before you do the stream. Uh, and and that, that helps in a number of other ways, which I will go into. For me, I chose to do mine at four o'clock in the morning, all the way through to four o'clock in the morning the following, uh, the following day a full 24 hours. I chose four o'clock in the morning personally because I knew that it wouldn't interrupt too much with my sleeping pattern. I normally get up at something like seven or eight o'clock in the morning uh, and I normally go to bed at kind of the uh, 12, one or two o'clock mark. It was not that much later that I was finishing or not that much earlier that I was starting the stream, but you'll have your own personal preferences on that. My advice is just to think about this properly in advance and not just to go into this choosing almost like a random on the fly time. It really helps with planning and communication and, and various other things as well if you really do think about the time that you're going to start it. Planning the gaming or the activities that you are doing, you may already have an idea about the types of things that you want to do on your stream, but I would really advise opening up Word or Notepad or something like that and just just almost brain dumping the sorts of things that you want to do on the stream uh, in terms of the games that you want to play uh, and also in particular the activities that you might want to do throughout the stream as well and when you would like to do them so you know you might be the type of guy to do one 
stream on one game uh, and you might be able to make that work really well or you might be a variety streamer that actually wants to stream multiple games over a course of time you may have a period of time where you have games that you always play uh, and then mix it up a little bit with some new games that you might not normally play or perhaps games that you've been wanting to play for a little while again my advice here is just to actually plan this rather than just do it randomly because what you don't want to be in you don't want to be in a position where at multiple points through the stream you're sort of questioning what to do and how to do it i would certainly strongly recommend uh, actually putting together a schedule as well uh, for your stream uh, in particularly when you will be eating your meals but certainly also the games that you're playing and when you're playing them this is really important because you may have certain views that only want to tune into certain types of content for instance more interactive content or less interactive content uh, quieter content more kind of uh, louder content or also just certain games that they may prefer uh, watching you play than, than others and it just means that you've got more more of a chance of being able to hook those viewers in for longer during those periods where you know they might be interested the last thing you want to do is be asking viewers to support you in a 24-hour stream and actually they know that really they're not going to enjoy the types of content it's not really good to force you, your viewers to do that uh, so I would strongly advise having a schedule of games, li literally opening up a Word document and noting the times and the titles of those games, all the activities. You may want to also just think in terms of planning about the uh, the, the times that you're going to uh, do certain activities. On, on my stream, what I did uh, in the early start, early hours of the morning, I started with some quite quiet content that allowed me to build myself up into the stream more sort of strategic games where I was able to slowly take my time and think about the decisions I was making. And it was later on in the stream that I did things like the first person shooters and more reactive responsive games. And then also I had a peak period of time where I would normally stream, uh, where I did more interactive type content, where it was like activities and some competitions and things like that. So that varying up the content, but planning it uh, made quite a big difference for the success of my personal 24 hour stream. Keeping it healthy. Uh, this this is you know, probably most of these things are fairly straightforward and obvious, but I'll say them anyway because it does make a really big difference on how you're going to feel during the stream. Uh, I, I personally found the 24 hour stream quite easy um, and it was only because I did most of these things that I'm saying. So, uh, so keeping it healthy, make sure you drink lots of water throughout. Hydrating is really, really important. Uh, it's really cliche to say this, but it really is. It, it's, it's massive. Just hydrating yourself, you're giving your body that hydration will help you. Uh, you probably don't know it, but being alert and entertaining and broadcasting for a much longer period of time, you will be using up a lot more uh, water and a lot more energy during the stream. So you may just want to consider uh, more regularly taking water and food intake. Uh, I would plan specifically the times that you want to be eating. The main reason for this is that if you plan for it, you're more likely to actually do it at those times and, and do it in itself which means you're less likely to skip it or pass it or, or just not do it to the right level. So, And also your users will then be able to know that you're, for instance, having breakfast or whatever, and they can plan their breaks in as well at the same times, so particularly those viewers that are going to stick around for the whole duration of the stream. I was quite lucky because I had a combination of people that stuck around literally the whole duration of the stream. And obviously that was only possible because I planned it in advance. But I also had a lot of people that came in and out throughout the day. And I had some people that only just came along for a couple of hours and watched the stream in various parts. You want to make sure that you're eating convenient meals, but meals that are quite healthy and that will be quite high in energy. I started the day with some uh, porridge or oatmeal if you're American. Um, and, and that porridge just gave me some nice energy for the sort of early parts of the day, some slow release carbohydrates. Uh, smoothies are also a really good option for like a quick uh, option. I made a fresh smoothie the day before, had that in the fridge. It was a really, really big smoothie and I drank that um, sort of just before my lunchtime. I'd recommend taking regular breaks uh, to stand up, have a little walk around. Uh, you might want to maybe use going to the toilet as, a, as an excuse for doing a, just a little bit of exercise in between. Uh, gaming and so on. I'd probably recommend taking at least a stand up uh, every one to two hours. It's not good to sit still for you know, four, five, six, seven hours. Uh, it's really not good to do that. So literally just making stand up, have a little bit of a stretch, walk to the toilet and come back or, or even just take a minute or two of fresh air will help you uh, in the long run. Try to get plenty of sleep before you do the stream. I was a little bit unlucky because I did plan for a really good night's sleep. I streamed about... Um, about 10 hours before my 24 hour stream and I made it a short stream, much shorter than it no would normally be. The problem I had was that I would, my, my brain went on to overdrive drive as soon as I went to sleep. And I went to sleep at about 10 o'clock uh, before the 4 a.m. stream. So I was giving myself at least sort of 
six, five or six hours of sleep. But I, I actually ended up only getting like one or two hours of sleep. And it was purely because I couldn't switch off before the stream. So you may just want to plan a little bit more than you think you need for the stream. Because it may be the case that you can't switch off for like anxiousness or excitement for the 24 hour stream. So maybe just building an extra hour or two of planning time. Try to match the stream as closely as possible to your actual normal sleeping pattern. Because that means you're not going to get like a, almost like a, a jet lag effect. Uh, so... For instance, having it so that it's very close to your bedtime a few hours later than your normal bedtime and a little uh, few hours earlier than your normal wake up time would, would minimize the effects of the 24 hour stream on your kind of sleep pattern. So that's it for health. Communication. Communication is really, really key to making it a successful stream. It's quite unique, 24-hour streams, assuming most people are not doing these like every few days or a week, which I wouldn't advise at all. Uh, I would certainly advise making these a special occasion type of thing, uh, and, and maybe only once every couple of months or something like that. Me personally, I'm going to probably do these maybe once every six months or once every three months. Uh, it just means that they're sparse enough to be unique um, but also sparse enough to be properly planned uh, doing these every couple of weeks or every month is probably a little bit too much so make sure you tell your viewers about it at least one to two weeks before the stream itself this will help build some hype but it also lets your viewers know uh, that your schedule may be slightly different to what it would normally be uh, assuming you have some sort of schedule even a rough schedule I don't have like a really defined schedule for my day-to-day -day streaming, but I've got a rough schedule. So people knew that um, my schedule would be slightly different to normal. Make sure you've got a timer countdown for your stream in your about section, uh, be that on Twitch or anywhere else, uh, YouTube gaming or whatever. There are loads of widgets uh, and panels that you can get to install that has a countdown to uh, like a custom message. I had a panel on mine that showed a countdown to, to it. I'll just actually show what the countdown was. So if you go into your stream manager section here and then click on the extensions at the bottom left hand side, um, you're able to look at my extensions. This is within Twitch uh, and I used a countdown XL panel, which was a panel in the about section of mine. Um, I gave it some custom titles and, and, and counted down from uh, well, counted up until when the stream was going to be going live. I also sort of customize the colors and things like that to match my my branding on my stream as well. So that was people were able to look at the about section. What I also had was a count down to the stream on uh, on my actual stream. So it's actually just above, it's not here now, but it was just above my head on my stream and it literally said countdown to the 24 hour stream. And a few days before the stream, I activated that so that people knew when it was, uh, when it, when it was about to start. But I also continually told people uh, that the starting time and day of it as well uh, in, the, in the streams leading up to the 24 hour stream. Uh, I would certainly recommend asking your viewers to get involved uh, in the run up to your stream, for instance, uh, verbally just saying guys you know uh, I'm gonna do the stream it might be tough make sure you get involved make sure you tune in uh, you don't have to be there the whole time but it'd be really good to have your support uh, that's really going to help people get excited and build a bit more hype but they also then may sympathize with you a little bit as well uh, and be more inclined to kind of lurk around or even just kind of prop you up with some interactivity on the stream particularly when you may start to feel tired during the stream there's nothing wrong with telling your viewers that you may struggle and that you might need a little bit of help and honestly that will go a long way to uh, to getting some empathy and sympathy i would certainly recommend setting up an image or a document that you can use to show and communicate to your viewers what the schedule is and the time of it and all that kind of stuff this this is the one that i did so i actually set the timings of each game uh in the early mid and late game uh, I, I just kind of had a 24-hour schedule and called it early mid and late game uh different games as you can see i started off with fairly kind of chilled games that were quite strategic i then get into some more real time type stuff uh, and then some more interactive stuff with like stream racer marbles on stream scriblio and then some more louder more interactive stuff later on in the evening which was fall guys among us uh in the end actually we ended up not doing some of these uh which kind of comes brings me on to kind of a bonus tidbit of, of advice that i'll give later on in in this video so this document i was able to use this uh, it's on immigro.com i was able to use this document in the in the days running up to the stream to tell people and uh, you know what what sort of games i'm going to be playing and that just meant anyone that for instance, anyone that's not interested in Age of Empires and City Skylines, they were able to say, well, you know what, I'll just plan to not tune in for that period or at least maybe lurk during that period and get some food or see my wife or whatever it is that they're going to do. 
So by having this schedule in place, you're at least able to communicate a little bit more detail to your viewers. And it just looks a little bit more professional as well, in my opinion. Also, it's a way of communicating exactly when it's going to start too. In my case, 4 a.m. on Tuesday, the 25th of August, 2020 is when I did it. And I did actually stick to that as well. So it was really good as a self-imposed kind of schedule as well. Obviously, you can link this onto commands and timers on your stream, both throughout the actual 24 hour stream and in the run up to your 24 hour stream as well. So this can be done in a really convenient way. I have set up some videos about how to set up timers and commands. So feel, feel free to browse my videos, uh, the Streamlabs play playlist. Continually updating the uh, titles of your stream and also the game category of your stream as well is really, really important. Uh, you, you don't want random people coming into your stream expecting you to be playing, for instance, City Skylines, if actually you're playing Marvels on stream um, and they're two completely different types of games. But also, when you then uh, look back on your statistics for the stream, it's a little bit more accurate, accurate and you might be able to get a little bit more insight too. So for me, I personally like to expose my viewers and my stream to quite a wide variety of games. And it also gives me some uh, some variability on my stream. So that's why I chose quite a few different games to play, but you may choose just two or three games and that might be your style and that's absolutely fine to do as well. You can even ask your mods in chat to do that uh, and they'll be more than happy to help you with that. Make sure you use any social media channels that you do have, uh, for instance, Discord, uh, for instance, Facebook or Instagram, that sort of thing, to just to communicate when it's going to happen but also whilst the stream is going on you can also post like success messages at the end of the stream or messages as the stream is going along it'd be really really fun just to do that and it just changes things up a little bit it also gives you some sort of tasks to do through the stream which again might help you your energy levels your motivation levels and things like that So now getting on to a little bit more about the content, one of the things I did at the start of the stream was to set my sort of, I called it low key expectations for the stream. I literally opened up at the start of the stream, a Word document, and I typed down what my low key expectations were for the stream. In terms of viewership, in terms of the games I was gonna play, in terms of like my objectives for the 24 hour stream, uh, for instance, one of my objectives was that the stream wouldn't die, or at least if it did die, it would be minimal impact and I could reload quickly. One of the uh, objectives was to have a really awesome raid at the end of the 24-hour um, stream. Uh, I wanted to raise some money for charity on my stream and various other objectives like that. By doing this, it's a good motivational tool for you, but it's also a really good interactive way of involving your community as well, uh, because then at the end of the stream, as a success tool, you can actually review your original objectives and see how the stream actually went. Don't be too disheartened if you don't meet every single objective. Uh, I was lucky, I did hit virtually every single objective, but it doesn't really matter if you don't hit all the objectives. Some of those objectives I'm sure will be there to challenge you as well as kind of uh, motivate you as well. So in terms of content, I would say try to vary up the content as much as you can throughout. Even if you're playing one game, try to do various things within that game, uh, or even if you're only playing just a short number of games, you know, you don't have to do the same things that you would always normally do in a uh, in your normal streams for a 24 hour period. You can do different things during that 24 hour period. I would certainly recommend trying new games or new uh, DLC or new mods or something like that during your stream. And that's a perfect opportunity to do that because it just gives some variance for your viewers and helps motivate them as well as yourself. I would recommend personally trying to build in at least two to three interactive games. Uh, or interactive pieces of content during your stream. On my stream, there are a number of different things that I did on my stream just to break up the content. Uh, I've already mentioned setting the objectives and reviewing the objectives. At one point, I let one of my viewers take over the commentary for one of the games whilst I was eating. Uh, it was one of the interactive games that we played. I actually built in some interactive games, specifically Stream Racer, Marbles on Stream, Scribblio and Among Us. They're all quite interactive games that you can play with users, but you may have uh, other ideas or better ideas than me for that. I specifically built in, almost by the content of the games I was playing, some interactivity. But I also did things like have some tournaments, have some dueling on my channel and some giveaways and things like that, just to keep things alive and keep things different. At one point, I actually drew the winner of a tournament as well uh, on stream. So I opened up Paint and drew him <laughs> what I thought he looked like. And, and it was just a really fun thing that we did during the stream. Don't feel pressure to explain the games and the, your strategies and your gameplay as much as you would normally do. Maybe perhaps normally you're quite narrative on your streams and that might work for you very well. 
on a 24 hour stream it's very difficult to keep that up for a long period of time but but people will understand it what i would recommend doing here is actually chiming into and explaining things only when more kind of substantial things happen with your gameplay and other than that maybe try and let your chat interact with you and drive the communications rather than you driving it as you might normally do i would also say it's a really good idea to open up your chat uh, i.e voice chat like discord or, or Teamspeak to your viewers. Uh, I did have a, a lesson here. One of my one of the people that joined was just a little bit a bit, a bit too hyper. He was kind of getting a little bit offensive on the chat. So uh, we had to quickly change things up to make sure that the uh, the 24 hour stream wasn't disrupted. Uh, but it worked really, really well. We just jumped into a different, more uh, restricted chat and it ran really, really smoothly from there. But what it was what it enabled me to do is trusted chat members were able to jump in the audio and keep my motivation alive a little bit and also during the more interactive games for example among us were able to play those games uh, and it just helped me feel a little bit more energetic and motivated Finally, I said I'd get into some bonus advice. So here's some tidbits for a 24 hour stream. I'm running one to the most successful degree possible. Making the stream charity based definitely is always a plus. Uh, it'll encourage the support of the stream and it just gives somebody an extra reason to both tune in, but also support the stream. We, we managed to raise, I was lucky, we managed to raise some money for charity. Um, and I, you know, I involved the users in that, but I also was really careful not to pressurize my users into making charitable donations because nobody likes being pressured into donating money if they perhaps can't afford it or don't want to be for any other reason. Allowing users to amend the schedule if needed. Um, I would recommend trying to stick to your schedule as much as possible. However, it may be the case that at certain times in the stream, it's necessary to change up the schedule off your own back, or even if the users clearly want something else different to what you've got planned. Good example of this for me is I actually started having a couple of, I wouldn't advise drinking on your 24 hour stream. However, if you're going to drink, make sure you leave it towards the end. Don't start too early. I left it till around about 10 or 11 o'clock in the evening um, and, and to, before I started, just having a couple of casual beers on stream. And that just also nicely coincided with playing Fall Guys and Among Us. Um, and at this point, it was pretty obvious that playing these more chilled games, Two Point Hospital, Anno 1800 and Factorio was probably not going to be a good thing. I had enough activity, enough interactivity on the stream to warrant sticking with Among Us. And that's exactly what we did. And also, I actually ended up finishing gaming a little bit earlier to review the objectives and just to chat a little bit more in closing, particularly to those views that had stuck the distance and, and done the whole 24 hours with me. So having the schedule is really, really important, but not necessarily sticking to it as rigidly at certain points in the stream. Uh, just keep an open mind about that. Don't be too much of a stickler for the schedule because actually your viewers might want something else and it's really good to just to, you know, respect their views and points of view. And finally, I would say it's a really good idea to set up some timers and some commands for your stream schedule in the run up to the 24 hour stream, but also whilst you're on the 24 hour stream as well. So timers will remind people of the schedule and you know your objectives perhaps for the 24 hour stream. But also the commands can also allow people to manually and autonomously draw information about that stream. For example, what charity you're doing it for, or what your plans are or whatever, uh, start times, end times, or even just to be able to call the URL, uh, for instance here, for the uh, the actual stream itself. So I would recommend using making the most of the, uh, the, the, you know, the schedule that you do put together so that your users can do that. I've done some videos on timers and commands, so feel free to, to browse my video. So there you have it. Hopefully you found this useful. Honestly, I really, really enjoyed my 24 hour stream. I'd recommend, you know, most people should try this at least one point in their sort of streaming lives. Uh, it's really fun. Uh, it's something completely different. Uh, and it's honestly, it's really, really awesome. Uh, let me know in the comments below how your 24 hour streams go. And also if you've got any more advice for me, because I'll be doing these again at some point in the future, uh, any advice that you'd recommend for running a successful 24 hour stream, uh, yeah, for now, thanks for tuning in and take care and I'll see you soon.